Professor Corrin's section. I'm Alec Cohen. My name is Dan Kelly. My name is Wei Ming. My name is Elizabeth Tennant. The purpose of this project is to design and build a gait trainer for people with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a disease that affects muscle control and strength, and a lot of times these patients cannot walk without the assistance of some device. So specifically, we are designing this device for Ariel Scheinman, who is 28 years old and lives in New York City. His cerebral palsy is severe enough that he cannot walk unaided and his legs also cross over when he walks, which makes it difficult for him to stay balanced. So we're creating a device that will help him um, walk and he uses this device for physical therapy. A lot of the gait trainers on the market today are um, pretty big and heavy. They don't fold very easily, so the main innovation of our gait trainer is to have it collapse very easily and into a small compact area so it can be stored in his small apartment and also so it can be transported from place to place. Um, I'm wearing a full body harness. It has um, these two attached rope um, to the front and back of the gate trainer to provide lower body support through these ropes and uh, upper body support that will prevent me from leaning back and bend forward. Um, there's also leg straps that's attached to the this side and the bottom side of the frame to prevent my legs from crossing when I walk. Um, the gate trainer also includes armrest that um, can keep my arms in place while I'm walking. So one of the main focuses of our device was to make sure that it would be able to fold up and fit in, in small spaces. So we incorporated these scissor linkages which allow the device when these sleeve slide to collapse into a smaller height. And also we included these hinge plates so that the sidebars can fold out and around to create something that's, that's small and kind of long to, to fit up against the wall or in some a vehicle when the device needs to be transported. So basically right now he's taking these pins out that lock the, the scissor linkage bars in place and the device collapses to a smaller height. After that you can take these pins that are located on the hinge plates out and that allow these the, the sides of the frame to fold out and around. <laughs> So incorporating these two folding mechanisms, we're able to create a device that can fit into much smaller places than any other gay trainer that's on the market. The major innovation of our gay trainer device is the fact that it can collapse so small and so compactly into a small space in a, such as a New York apartment like REL's. Um, the scissor linkage mechanism really allows that compact folding method and um, the hinge plates that we added allows the uh, arms of the gay trainer to fold around each other so it's a flat plane that can fit easily inside of an apartment. The wheels, we also increased the size from the original Rift and Gay Trainer from 5 inches to 8 inch diameters so this makes a big difference when Ariel will be um, walking around on the streets of New York when there might be bumps or cracks in the road the larger diameter wheels will really help smooth out that uh, ride. Um, we did all of these changes, increased the foldability and collapsibility as well as the wheel size increase while also maintaining the stability of the device. Um, REL should feel safe and secure in the device. Um, we made it uh, stable so that it can support his weight in all directions. We'd like to thank Professor Corrin and Wen Tsai Wang for all of their help and support throughout this entire process. Um, it was really beneficial and great to work with them this semester.